And now we're gonna move on to the other kimono. So this is a furisode kimono. I believe the outside is made of silk and the inside might also be made of silk. Um, it is very, very, very beat up and dirty. Um, it came to me like that. I got it specifically because it was very cheap um, and would be a good study piece and I wouldn't have to worry about uh, taking something pretty and useful out of the world uh, because this thing is basically unsalvageable. Like maybe you could wash it and like dye it and use it that way, um, but it is definitely not wearable in its current state. So let's go ahead, take a peek see at this boy. So first thing you can note, obviously, is that the sleeve is much, much longer. And it's got that curve at the bottom here um, that uh, most kimono have. The other Jibon uniquely did not have this. It was just a straight cut, but this one does have the curve. And we'll look at the sleeves a little bit more in a minute, but let's start with the collar. So furisode are a more formal um, kind of dress up style of kimono so I'm expecting to see probably better construction on this compared to the other one since it was more casual uh, but we will find out. Um, starting off uh, the um, Han Eri looks like it is much better sewn in. Um, it goes all the way to the edge of the garment and uh, it, the stitches are not super visible. One thing that is interesting about this is that it's got a full width collar. You can tell that it's quite a bit larger than the other one. So it would be designed to be folded under like so uh, before it is worn and then the uh, eri shin would be slipped into this uh, after it's been folded, most likely. So you see here um, that it's only been sewn to the edge and has not wrapped around to the other side because this edge is already going to be folded under, so you don't need to do that extra fold. Let's take a look on the inside. Okay. Interesting. So, the collar is made of a couple pieces from the look of it. The the way two-part collars are usually made is that they are um, either one long piece that's folded over or two pieces that meet in the middle and are sewn. Um, this appears to be one piece for the main part of the collar that is this lightweight but a little rough cotton. And then at the bottom of the collar where it would peek out from under the Han Eri once it's sewn on, it's got the same silk as the rest of the garment applied to it, but if you take a look here you can see that it's um, not actually gone all the way and it doesn't wrap all the way around that is just a piece that's applied on top here to make it look nicer um, this is also hand stitched down on the back here uh, but the stitches are much smaller uh, much less visible and the way the ironing is done also folds over slightly on top of them to hide uh, a lot of the stitching. So this is looks a little bit more professional. Um, the uh, the Han Eddy looks like it could be like a, a silk file or something. Um, it's got these little ribs in it, uh, but I, I certainly don't know and I wouldn't know unless I did a, um, a burn test on it, which I might do, but I'm also not certain if I want to pick this off or not yet. I like having it as a reference. Um, keep looking on the inside. So this is a lined juban, which I didn't know was a thing, but apparently is. Um, 
formal kimono are lined, but apparently formal juban can also be lined. So it looks like this lining, hmm, is it attached or is it floating? Interesting. Okay, so it looks like at each of the seams where the two sides are sewn together, the uh, lining and the exterior might be attached. I just tried to see if I could lift the lining from the outer part and they are not wanting to separate and I don't want to force it. However, it also looks to be hand stitches that are not visible from the inside. So I'm not quite sure how they were able to pull that off. Kimono lining is a very unique process that I don't really know anything about and I've not been able to find any good resources about it online. Um, but it's done with a very specific process uh, and that's about the end of my knowledge. So your guess is as good as mine on some of this. But let's take a look. So it's sewn together with semi-invisible stitches on basically all of the main body pieces and then ironed. Um, traditionally, the way uh, Japanese garments are ironed, they're not ironed open. They're ironed so that there's actually a slight lapping of one side over the other, which also helps conceal the stitching. But then up around where it opens for the sleeve, it appears to be hand sewn. Uh, and it looks like the stitching has started to come undone right in here. Uh, but it is very clearly hand sewn with pretty even stitches. These are, are pretty nice stitches, probably better than I could do. Um, up both sides so it looks like they were sewn together up until this point and then the two sides are folded in towards each other and stitched down like that um, for where it connects to the sleeve uh, or where it leaves the opening I should say for the sleeve um, it's also hard to guess on this one where the stitching was supposed to keep it to the sleeve with um, given that the stitching started to come out, but that's just the way it is. We'll take a look at the sleeve in a second, but let's keep looking at the main body. So up here, it looks like the collar was applied after the lining, which makes perfect sense. It was probably sewn on the outside and then folded in since this is all done in one piece. Um, and this is uh, a really cool feature that it has here. So there is a snap installed. I don't know if this was done by the um, owner or if it was done professionally, but they are very nicely, cleanly sewn in snaps. Uh, and my guess is, is that these are here um, so that when you wear this juban, it holds the uh, folded collar better in place for you um, so that it doesn't come out of place while you're wearing it which is a really neat little feature. Uh, I might incorporate that on some of the, uh, the outer kimono for mine since I plan on having a full width collar at least for the um, outer kimono, uh, the uh, hikizuri uh, style kimono that I'm planning on making. So that is, that is a very cute little feature, a nice little insight into the wearing convenience. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's a pretty good start. So there's the back piece, and then there's the front piece, and then the okumi, uh, usually. It looks like, however, though, that they've abridged the okumi for this pattern, um, because we don't need that full width like you would have in a kimono. Um, I know in some juban, you basically just don't get an okumi at all. It cuts off on the main front piece. Um, but this one, it looks like they did like a little, little okumi, which you can tell which piece that is because it has this diagonal cut where the collar comes across it. Um, but it looks like it was sewn on one side. 
and then flipped over and that's how they covered the lining uh, was using this okumi piece and you can't really see it very well. Let me see if I can show it to the up close camera. You can see the sort of darkened edge here because that's where the other pieces ended um, and where the okumi comes out a little bit further so it's kind of caught that dark line from where that bulk has been and created a little bit of a difference between the two there. Um, which is really interesting. So the, the, I'm going to call it an okumi. It probably has another name because it's not really an okumi, but I'm going to call it that because I don't know what else to call it. Um, is, uh, it's really interesting. It's, it's wider than the fabrics underneath it, but it's also sort of enclosing them. And then it's folded to the inside and I think sewn down from there. Um, it's hard to tell what's machine sewn and what's hand sewn. I think a lot of this is um, done in some version of what we would probably call a, uh, a ladder stitch. Because it's semi-invisible from the outside and I don't know how else you would do this because there's no visible seaming on it. Um, but yeah, I would say it's probably either a blind stitch or a like ladder stitch on this to hold it in place. But yeah, so that's folded up around the edges to give that clean finish. So my guess is, is these pieces were laid in together, um, the outside and the lining, and then the okumi was folded up on top of them. Sorry about the lighting, by the way, uh, to, uh, cover up those raw edges and to hold everything together. Uh, because of the translucence of the fabric, you can actually see through it pretty well and see all of the layers on top of each other. So it looks like at the bottom here, the, um, there's also another piece that basically functions as a facing at the bottom. Um, it, at first I thought it was just the outside folded over, but it's not. It is two separate pieces of the same fabric. So the outside and the inside are um, separate. Uh, interesting, okay. So, conjecture again, but it looks like it might have been that the lining and this bottom facing piece were sewn together first, and then the facing here at the bottom and the outside were folded up into each other and sewn down that way. Uh, let me see if I can get this on the detail camera. But if you look carefully, you can see stitching from where the two pieces got connected. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, if you can't see it, you're just gonna have to take my word, but there's these little dots in it where you can see stitching um, from the outside where the two were, I think, sewn together. Uh, and you can't see it nearly as much from the inside. There's a lot of stitches out here and not many under here. So it's possible that this outside edge was stitched down first to hold it in place or something, and then the inside was stitched or some combination, but it is very clear that these two pieces were folded in and then stitched to each other rather than, than being stitched uh, right side to right side and then fold it out. And then the facing piece is sewn a little bit differently. It is, it is sewn with what looks like right sides together or with like a blind stitch after this was sewn together. So my guess is, is this was all finished first and then this was applied on top of it, the, uh, the okumi. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's, I feel like I'm getting a lot of information that I don't really know what to do with here. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, in the spirit of learning, uh, and you can really see how heavily damaged the inside is, I uh, actually wonder if I should be uh, looking at this with a, uh, like, respirator on or something, but I don't feel like they would have sold me a dangerous kimono. So hopefully I'll be okay. I'll wash my hands afterwards either way though. Um, anyways, 
So that's the main body from the look of it, as far as I can tell. Let's look at the sleeves. Oh, okay. I missed a part on the back. We're gonna look at something on the back first. So whereas the other one was smooth backed, this one has a uh, extra line of stitching here in the middle. Um, that is basically, let me see if I can show you. It's a, a way for the fabric to be taken up to adjust for fit, basically. Um, so kimono are very adjustable garments. Um, and oftentimes they're designed to be worn by either multiple people or people in multiple stages of their life. So they're very adjustable in a lot of ways. And this line of stitching along the back here is one way of doing that wherein you bring up the length, the length, excuse me, I lost my ability to speak, the length of the fabric. Um, it also can just be a stylistic thing. I think some people do these as just like a, like a fake out sort of thing, um, just because it's something that a lot of kimono have, so a lot of people want it. Um, but it can, it can serve a, a number of different purposes. It is hand sewn from the look of it though um, with a very small running stitch along the outside and then it is not stitched into the lining so that is just something on the outside of this one so this might be for cosmetic reasons um, but if you have a guess as to what you think that this line could be, uh, you know, just let me know. Back to the sleeve. So the sleeve is quite long, which footy soda sleeves usually are. So we're gonna back that up a little bit. Let's see, let's see how long this sleeve is. I'm curious. Eighteen, thirty-six. It's about thirty-eight inches, um, give or take a little bit, because that's a very haphazard measurement. But uh, I will put on screen which uh, length of forisode that means it is, because the different lengths have different names. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so along the back, as usual, it is open all the way down. Um, it is aligned, uh, same as the other one was, uh, but it is self-lined in the same fabric rather than a contrasting fabric. And it looks like the inside was stitched down with relatively wide stitches and a small blind hem on the front from the look of it. Let me see if I can show you guys this detail. So on the back here, you can't really see it. It's hard to get a good view of it. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but you can see the sort of longer stitches. Oh, let me see if I can get it in here. So the longer stitches here. And then on the outside, you can't even really see it unless you're very, very close in person. And those are, uh, I believe, a form of blind stitch. Um, but the So the sleeve at the back, at least, looks like the two sides were folded up on each other and folded in with uh, quite a wide seam allowance here on the inside. Since this fabric is so translucent, you can see it again where the fabric comes all the way to here on it. So quite a, quite a thickness there. And then up here where the lining is sewn in, it looks like both pieces were sewn together um, against the lining in the main body fabric and then covered by the lining. Um, oh, okay, interesting. So um, the exterior of the sleeve can be totally pulled away from the interior where the lining is. So the exterior and the shell of the kimono are sewn together and then the lining 
and the lining of the sleeve and the body are sewn together, but those two were not all sewn together like I thought they might be based on the interior. So that is very interesting. Okay. It might be that all of the lining seams were sewn together, right sides together maybe, uh, with the internal shell and then turned right side out um, through the collar and then all of that would have been encased in the collar when it was sewn up. Uh, but I also don't know what the like poli policies on bag lining are for Japanese kimono um, compared to like uh, garments in the West. So that is something a little bit out of my purview. Um, compared to the other Juban, uh, the sleeve openings do match up on this one. The back might be slightly higher than the front, but if it is, it looks like it's probably just an accident, not on purpose. And then let's take a look at the front. Oh, okay. So the front on this one also opens basically all the way to the bottom. It is, it is held closed with another one of those little stitches. The same as the um, more casual Jubanas. Um, and it opens all the way to the bottom. I wonder if that's a common feature of Juban or if I just got a couple of odd ones. Um, the lining and the shell for the sleeves is sewn more or less the same all the way around with the two parts folded up against each other and stitched from the outside rather than uh, right sides together. That goes pretty much across the front and the back of this. Uh, though the back has smaller stitches or I should say wider spaced stitches than the front. The back has them in almost these like forms of two where you go like two, 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 two. Whereas on the front it's a very regular and um, very even. Whoever did this hand sewing is um, very talented. They, these look really beautiful. Um, this is probably an example of uh, Unshin sewing. And then along the bottom here, so the slit in this goes until right here. And then it basically opens up into, it, or closes, I should say, into its curve. Um, okay. My camera cut off, sorry. So uh, I don't remember exactly what I was saying, but I think I was about to talk about the fact that there is a little reinforcement stitch right here at the end where the split finishes to, and then it goes into the curve of the sleeve here, uh, which is also where the stitching style changes again. Um, so at this front opening, it's got these very even, kind of tight blind stitches and then this appears to be where that two space to space style of stitching comes in that goes all the way up the back here. Um, interestingly as well, these stitches, these super wide stitches are actually the ones visible from the front of the garment because um, we're looking at the back of it right now. Um, but I guess since you wouldn't really see basically any of this part under the sleeve that it doesn't really matter that much. And then once it goes on to this part, you have that wide stitching go to the inside of the sleeve rather than the outside. So uh, this part that would peek out of the back of your kimono uh, potentially would still look very pretty. So it's really just this bottom part right here that has these uh, wider stitches like this. This is quite a lightweight garment. This uh, silk that they used is very soft and very thin, um, which I think is very pretty. It's a shame that it's so stained because I think this is actually a very beautiful textile. Uh, but, say la vie. Um, okay, uh, I think that's pretty much it for this. I think we've investigated it as much as I, I can manage in my current state of knowledge. Um, if I've gotten any of those uh, 
pieces of information about the construction or why they did things the way they did, I'll be sure to include a voiceover. You've probably already heard it in the video by this point. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, just to finish, I am going to put both of these on my dress form so you can see potentially what they would have looked like uh, worn. Um, I might try the one previous on myself, but since this one is pretty gross looking, I don't really want to put it on my body. So I will just show it to you on a dress form instead.